Hello friends and welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Alyssa and I'm the Science Program Manager at Boston Children's Museum. And today I'm going to show you how to do something called color chromatography. And what's chromatography, I hear you ask? Well, chromatography is something that scientists use when they need to separate out the parts of a mixture. For today, that mixture is going to be the ink in magic markers. So think about that for a second. Let's say you have purple. What are the colors that you need to make purple? You probably know that it's red and blue. So if you take red paint and blue paint and mix them up to make purple, can you unmix them? Right? Well, it turns out you can, and chromatography is the way to do that. I'm going to show you a really simple way to do that, and you'll wind up with some really beautiful papers when we're done. Here's the things you'll need for this project. You'll need some washable markers or wet erase markers, plain white paper coffee filters, a plain white plate or dish of some kind, or if you don't have one, a piece of white paper with a piece of wax paper on top of it. A small bowl or jar of water. A straw. And a towel or rag of some kind. Here's how to do your color chromatography. Start by taking a coffee filter and spreading it out flat. And we're going to start with just one marker. And I'm going to use black. Because remember how I said before that to make purple, you need red and blue. So I want you to make a prediction about what are the colors we're going to, to see when we unmix black. So to do that, I'm just going to make a little black circle. Then to pick up the water, I'm going to put my straw in the water, put my finger over the end to just get a little bit of water. And then drop it onto my coffee filter. And now at this point, you have to be patient and just wait while it does its thing. So I'm going to take this and set it aside. And I'm just going to put it behind me here on a plastic bag that I have so that it doesn't get everything around me wet. Then I'm going to take my rag and dry off the wax paper so that it's dry for my next experiment. You can see it doesn't really matter if it's clean, but it does matter if it's dry. Now, here's another kind of experiment you can try red and blue make purple. So I'm going to take some blue and some red and make some purple. Now normally, again, you would think, well, now that I've mixed those up, I can't separate them, but that's exactly what chromatography does. Put my finger over the end of the straw, pick up some water, drop a little water on there, and set it aside to dry. Now, let's come back to that first one, the black one. Look what happened. Look at all that blue. And there's some red in there, too. Really interesting. That's not quite what I expected. And now let's see what happened with my purple circle. Yeah, you can see the red and the blue on the edges. And there's still a little bit of purple in the middle because it hasn't com completely dried and stopped spreading yet. So you can use these ideas 
to make all kinds of designs on your paper. The trick is to not use too much water. So here's another one that I made. It's still a little wet. It still needs to finish drying. But this started off actually as kind of a flower shape and now it's just this really beautiful design. So explore with your chromatography and see what you can come up with. So I've done a whole bunch of these now. They all look really cool. There's some really neat patterns and colors. Looks like tie-dye, but now that I have all these papers, I'm not really sure what to do with them. I mean, I, I know. I'm going to call my friend Faith. She's the art educator at the Children's Museum, and I bet she will have a lot of great ideas about cool things you can do with your chromatography paper. I'm going to call her right now. Hi, Faith. Hi, Alyssa. So do you remember the other day I was telling you that I was going to do that um, color chromatography activity? Yes. It sounded so exciting. It's really cool. And so I did a few, and now I have these really beautiful designs on some coffee filters. But like, I don't really know what to tell kids they can do with them. I mean, I guess they could hang them up. But aside from that, I, I, I'm kind of at a loss. I was hoping well, you would have some ideas. Yeah. Well, first of all, those are really beautiful. Very, very beautiful. I love the way the colors are spreading together. Yeah. It's just amazing. Amazing. I could even draw on top of that. It would be fun. Oh, yeah. So I was, yeah, you could use a pencil and draw, add some lines to it. That would be great. Sure. So I was really excited to play with this. So I'm glad that you reached out to me. So I took some coffee filters and clay. The first one, I just made some polka dots. I love polka dots. And, and I, I decided I would try without water first. So that was my without water. And then I took one of my coffee filters and I colored all over it, like a whole, whole lot. And then... Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was really That's fun. That's so pretty. And I, I put my hand in the water and just flicked the water on it, just a whole bunch. And then I laid it on a cardboard to help it dry because I found it was kind of getting messy. Yep. So those, those were the first two ways that I played around with it. And then I was like, let's add some other things. What do I have around the house? Right. So I found an old clothespin in the back of a drawer and I took one of my coffee filters and squished it in the middle. It looks like a butterfly. Yeah. And then I took my clothespin and put it in the middle for the <laughs> body. Amazing. And then I gave it a little face. I love that. Yeah. So now I have a little friend there. Good. Um, <laughs> And then I kept playing. I took another one to make a flower. Pretty. And I squished it kind of from the back. Yep. And I took a twisty. I don't know if you have these. I red. have a junk drawer full of those. So yeah. Yeah, they're really, really fun and easy to work with. And I twisted it around the back. Okay. To create a little stem. Yep. I love it. That looks so easy to do too. Yeah, and then I'm like, oh, well, how about I put it in my hair? <laughs> you, you look like you're in Hawaii. Yes, I'm going to take vacation. Absolutely. Just vacation in my home. <laughs> That's great. And then for my last one, I found some string, and I cut some holes uh -huh. in it, and that was a little tricky. So I think maybe an adult, if you're having trouble with that. Yep. And I strung the, the yarn through it. And I was like, maybe I can make like the world's biggest necklace. And it's really big. And I'm going to tilt this so you can see. It is enormous. It's enormous. You are like on your way to the tropics and ready to I'm, party with everyone. I'm ready to celebrate something. I don't know what. But um, yeah. so that's what I did. That's it was great. really fun. Super. Thank you so much, Faith. Um, I'm recording this right now for the kids, and I hope that they take some of your ideas and their own ideas and really go nuts with this activity. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Totally. I bet kids have so many ideas that we haven't even thought of, and I'm so excited to hear or see what they do. Yeah. I, at the end of the video, I'm going to ask them to uh, post them, so hopefully we'll get to see what they do. I can't wait. Okay, great. Well, it was good to see you. I'll talk to you later. Wow, well, as I expected, Faith had a lot of ideas. She's really good at that sort of thing. 
So I hope you had fun with today's activities and that maybe you use some of Faith's ideas or some of your own ideas to come up with cool things to do with your chromatography papers. If you do, please take pictures of how your papers come out and post them below and tell us what you're going to do with them. And of course, keep checking back on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for all kinds of other fun activities that you can do. Thanks for joining me today. See you next time.